My name is Peyton Marquez and I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I'm Angela Morrow. And hi, I'm Todd Morrow. And we have Ryan, who is 10 years old and has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. My name is Seda Falenko. I am Marco Falenko's mother. Marco is a now nine-year-old boy diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a rare muscle disease that affects mostly kids, boys, and it makes their muscles very weak. In their teens, most of them are in a wheelchair. My name is Stephanie Winton, and my son is Dalton Winton. He's two years old, and at 10 months old, he was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. Many people with spinal muscular atrophy are completely disabled with no body movement. Um, they have to have feeding tubes and trachs to breathe. My name is Angelica Rojas, and I was born with the rare genetic disease called adenosine deaminase deficiency. I was born without an enzyme in my body that helps support a healthy immune system. My name is Erica, and I'm the mother of a TBCK warrior. That is Ava's official diagnosis. It was a really long journey. Ava is almost seven years old, and we found out her diagnosis when she was five. We went to a number of other centers from Texas to San Diego, also San Antonio. We have been to a number of locations for evaluation for Ryan, both on the West Coast and Midwest, but we just weren't satisfied with the direct care that we were getting with Ryan. We just felt that something else was not right. It was that that kind of kept us looking and not just taking the word of the physicians. Me being a physician, being in that position where I know when something's not right, something's not right. I was diagnosed at Children's Hospital Los Angeles when I was five years old. Transitioning from pediatric care to adult care had been difficult. Once I turned 21, a CHLA kind of was like, time for you to grow up. I joined several groups based on Ava's symptoms, and I would peruse the feed and, and chat with some of the parents. I did see a post about the Undiagnosed Disease Network, put in an application, got all of Ava's medical documents, wrote letters, and, and everything that was required for the process and we were accepted into the program. That was probably the second most exciting day to actually getting her diagnosis. When you first get the diagnosis, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a grieving process. The day that Brian was diagnosed and Angie and I sat out in front of a fountain outside of a hospital crying for a while, it hits you hard. You've got to go through that process. People handle it different ways and uh, we chose to handle it in a way that, you know what, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, fight every chance we get. We're gonna try to make a difference and try to help as many people as we can. It has been like finding a missing piece of your family. For so long, we were trying to fit Ava in a piece of a puzzle that she really didn't fit. With my condition, I don't look sick to many people. So to the health system, I wasn't sick enough for Medi-Cal, I wasn't sick enough for social security benefits. So for two years, I went without insurance. My body took a big hit and I, you know, have, unfortunately, I have a lot of lung damage. So we started searching, talking to other families and talking to other people in the Duchenne space. And one name that kept coming up was UCLA. The community there was is very strong. You have the doctors that will call you on your phone that respond to emails. The first time that we actually had a glimmer of hope and light was when we met Stan Nelson. Dr. Nelson. And then we met Dr. Shea, and it was a complete life changer. He obviously comes from a place that he understands uh, because his son has Duchenne as well. Dr. Shea was the first person to finally sit down and tell me what SMA was. Immediately, he started talking about treatment options, and he explained it so much better, and we realized that we had a fighting chance here with our son. We were very lucky to have received exposure to all the resources there, clinical trials and testing. We were trying to also get a site that was on the cutting edge of trials and new therapies and new options. There was a lot of things involved in the clinical trial, a lot of MRIs, muscle biopsies, countless blood tests, things like that. They kept talking to me about how they, I was gonna maybe do a clinical trial, my parents, and they said it was would have, it's my decision if I wanna do it or not, and I said yes because I wanted to help other kids who were less fortunate as me. There was nothing else out there. There was no other chance or hope, and this was the, the glimmer of light that we saw. 
he got gene therapy and uh, we were the first at UCLA to get it outside of clinical trials. After a while, they were able to get the IV catheter in and it was literally as simple as him napping in my arms for an hour and he got his gene therapy transfusion. After that, we actually noticed immediate change. Within two, three days, he was kicking his little legs like in a shopping cart. And then we just have noticed great change, like in strength. Ryan was one of the first patients that Dr. Nelson performed a needle biopsy. Ryan was up and out the door in an hour or so, and there was no side effects, and he was running and playing the next day. It's amazing compared to the alternative that exists today. Really, the hope is for gene therapy to be the solution. My first one wasn't a successful one but it doesn't mean that trying it again wouldn't render a more successful gene therapy. We were actually trying at the time actively to have a, a second child. So once we found out he had Duchenne, we, we did stop temporarily trying to have, have a, another child. As we researched more, we found out about IVF. There can be a testing done on the embryos, genetic testing to see which of those embryos are carriers or have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's very time consuming. It's emotionally and physically and financially draining. But in the end, we were successful in having another son without Duchenne muscular dystrophy. His best interests were in mind of every doctor. And uh, from, you know, Dr. Shea and Dr. Nelson, their, their mindset was very much about uh, not just you know, his future quality of life, but also about the quality of the experience as he goes through this. Dr. Butch has um, always tried to find answers for everything. I always describe my relationship with my care providers and Dr. Butch and other doctors that I see in Syria as kind of like a little tribe. When I have a question or if I'm not feeling well, he'll try to get to the bottom of it. Even like for my birthday this year, he got me some birthday donuts. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, having a doctor that truly cares and is there and uh, understanding it has been a world of difference. Very fortunate in terms of coming to UCLA and, and being under his care. We have to say we're no longer just a number in the system. We are part of the family at UCLA and the care that Ryan gets, Ryan actually enjoys going to it. For Peyton to be uh, still up and maneuverable and walking around and ambulatory at, at 15, is quite an achievement. Dalton is absolutely in love with Dr. Shay. Every time we go down to LA, like once we pull into the parking garage, he knows where he is and he loves it. He loves to show off for Dr. Shay. Everyone there at UCLA absolutely just adores him and Dalton never feels like a patient. The biggest piece of advice is research. Do research, research. Internet is a very helpful tool. Learn all you can. It's a good investment uh, in, in a child's future to be as engaged as possible with both the medical professionals as well as, as, as the community. Be patient, but also be persistent. Trust your gut. You have to be vigilant. Make sure that you do what is necessary to get the answers that you need for your family. It's a long journey, it's a hard journey. I think as a primary caretaker, it's important just to take time for yourself. Always ask questions and never be afraid of it. It's always better to ask questions and have that better understanding. Have a good support team, whether it be your family, your friends, your relatives. Don't do it alone, you know what I mean? Find a good uh, team of doctors and a good team of friends and family and keep them close. You're gonna need them through this experience. Don't ever stop spreading your story. Don't ever stop explaining how important these things are for your child. You're always going to have to fight for your kid. And this is just gonna be a little bit harder of a fight, but you're gonna find those people who help you out phenomenally. This is Ava, this is Ava. our PDCK warrior. Ava Brio-Cox. You should never underestimate her. I mean, she's capable of a lot of things. <laughs> and soon enough, she'll be running around and chasing me all over. In the dance. Ha <laughs> ha